Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. Let's screen for some high beta stocks. Okay, we'll bring in Kevin Matris, who heads up the Research Wizard division here at Zax.com. He'll tell us all about how to do that. High beta stocks. Sounds like it has something to do with volatility. Yes, it does. Um, you know, I have written about uh, low beta stocks in the past, and what's interesting is that I think a lot of people kind of focus on low beta stocks or low volatility stocks for a reason because they believe it gives them some additional safety. Uh, today though I wanted to go in the different direction and talk about high beta stocks. Okay. So I figured we would first start off with a definition and the definition of beta is it is simply a measure of an asset's risk relative to the market, typically the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically it's looking at how a stock has reacted uh, while the S&P has gone up and down. So check this out. A beta of one means the stock's relative volatility is equal to that of the market. A beta of greater than one means it is more volatile than the market. And a beta of less than one means it is less volatile than the market. So if you have a beta of let's say 1.5, that means you should have or you should see one and a half times the movement of the market or you should see movement 50% greater than the market. If the market is going down, more than likely those high beta stocks should be dropping more. But if the market is going up, that means you should see those stocks go up one and a half times the market or 50% more than the market. So with the market going up lately, these stocks may be doing pretty well, uh, but what would they? What would happen on the way down? Would they get crushed on the way down? You know, it's interesting because that would be somebody's first conclusion. Uh, but I ran some tests and I had found some very interesting statistics. So I ran some tests with the research wizard. The first ones I did was I looked for stocks with betas half as much as the market, and the other test was looking for stocks with betas 50% more than the market. Mm -hmm. Now, the results of this test didn't really surprise me that much in that the high beta stocks did indeed move more than the market and the low beta stocks moved less than the market. But the high beta stocks didn't lose 50% more than the market on the way down and the low beta stocks didn't lose 50% less than the market on the way down. But there was some interesting stuff, so check this out. The high beta stocks in this test using a one-week rebalancing period between January 4th of 2008 and March 6th of 2009, that was the low of the market, the high beta stocks lost 59.9% while the market only lost 51%. So that means the high beta stocks showed an excess loss of 8.9 percentage points. The low beta stocks, on the other hand, lost 42.8% versus the S&P's minus 51%, meaning it outperformed the S&P, or in other words, lost less, by 8.2 percentage points. However, during the periods of March 6th, 09, through 8.28.09, just uh, uh, the other week, that is the period immediately following the low of the market. The high beta stocks showed a compound return of 127.8% versus the S&P's 52.5%, which is nearly two and a half times the market's return. And the low beta stocks, however, showed just a 29.1% return, well under the market's 52.5% performance. Now, I do want to say that when I did this test, uh, I applied this test to stocks that were trading over $5, and they had to have at least 50,000 shares traded on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is that, true to form, the high beta stocks did move more in the market, and they also did move uh, you know, more, whether it be up or down, low beta stocks move less than the market. But the reason why I'm focusing on the high beta stocks right now is because when the market went down, those high beta stocks didn't lose anywhere near as much as you would have thought they would have lost, but when the market went up, they had outperformed the market in a staggering manner. When you look at the low beta stocks, yeah, they did underperform the market, did better on the way down, but on the way up, they had performed very mediocrely at best. And I think if you focus on the best of the high beta stocks, I think this is definitely way to play the market as we continue on. 
All right, seems pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Run through those parameters, would you? Yeah, sure. The, uh, the screen starts off with something pretty basic, looking for companies with a price of greater than or equals to $5. Once again, true to the test that we did, average 20-day volume is greater than 50,000 shares. Uh, we're looking at companies with a Zaxx rank of a 1, so only Zaxx's top-rated stocks will get through strong buys. And again, we're looking for companies with a beta of greater than or equals to 1.5. These are the companies that should move a lot more than the market. And how many stocks made it through? Uh, I think, I can't remember, I think there was like over 45 stocks that made it through. Wow. Uh, here's five of them. You've got a bunch of different stocks from a whole slew of different industries. Expedia, Masco, Nina Paper, NBTY, Whirlpool, a bunch of different companies. What's interesting is that they all look good technically, they all look good fundamentally, and they seem as if they are poised for market-beating performance. Pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you own either of those? I do not. All right. If you are accessing this video outside of Zax.com, get over to Zax.com's homepage. Click on the text version if you want to read about this screen of the week and you can do that by scrolling down the home page and clicking on the headline next to Kevin's picture. If you want to find out more about the research wizard, the tool that Kevin uses to achieve these screens, go to zax.com forward slash research wizard. With Kevin Matris and the screen of the week, I'm Terry Ruffalo.